But one last thought. I would hope that, uh, uh, again, I think the moon is close by, and whatever we can actually get a, a benefit out of going back there, we should, uh, before you take the next step. Uh, however, the, the most important thing was if Mars, can I, uh, I ask permission for one minute for, for this question, and that is, you have indicated that Mars had a, uh, was totally different thousands of years ago. Uh, is it possible that there was a civilization on Mars thousands of years ago? So the evidence is that um, Mars was different billions of years ago, not billions. thousands of years ago. Well, yes. That. And, and um, there would be, there is no evidence that uh, I'm aware of that would you that, rule? Would you rule that out? That see, there's some people. Well, anyway, with, I would. Uh, I would say that is extremely unlikely. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Brothers. Thanks for the good job you're doing. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Rohrbacher. Looking forward to finding out what's up there. That's for sure. Although through a process of Pavlovian conditioning, the harnessing of ferocious peer-pressured conformity as force for rejecting such claims that a past civilization once inhabited Mars, or indeed Mars as being the origins of life on Earth. It is a theory held in high regard by countless great-minded professionals within astrobiological fields. This strong scientific interest is often due to the planet's proximity and indeed its many similarities with Earth. However, to date, no proof has ever been publicly disclosed of past or present life on Mars. This, however, does not mean that they have not found it. We here at Mystery History have a far more accurate understanding of the processes of concealment, and indeed, the specific motivation behind such conspiracies than most. We often realize the thinking behind the concealment of certain past events motives which far outweigh the financial gain one could expect from knowing that which others do not. Through our extensive research into artifacts which push our timeline here on Earth back several hundred million years, we have come to realize that the majority of people, unfortunately, are content with a lie, a lie in replacement of a terrifying truth. Numerous studies have revealed that human nature is, in part, formed by a supposedly unknown past trauma, or possibly several. It seems we have lived through an event which we could not comfortably deal with on a psychological level. The syndrome has become known as planet amnesia, and numerous highly compelling studies have demonstrated a strong argument for its existence. It seems we also have characteristics isolated by numerous talented individuals which demonstrate our anatomical structure was not built for Earth, suggesting we were built for an entirely different gravitational field, specifically a lower gravity, one like Mars has. Many other ailments we suffer, some believe, demonstrated that we were not originally native to Earth. Scientific searches for evidence of life began in the 19th century, and they continue to this day via telescopic investigations and land admissions. However, it is imperative, while searching for the truth, to be vigilant of concerted efforts to conceal it, or the creation of distractive conspiracy, funded hostilities, and attacks directed toward possible hypothesis. During the first days of serious exploration, regarding the posit that civilization began on Mars, a lot of people were indeed searching for the ruins of such anomalies. Modern scientific inquiry, on the other hand, merely mocks such opinion, heavily emphasizing the search for water, chemical biosignatures in the soil and rocks at the planet's surface. Did the realization of intricacies surrounding such a theory being true stonewall further public study? It does appear to be the motive for concealment which we have experienced many times before. But one last thought. Have ruins I been discovered that, uh, and subsequently uh, again, covered up due to a wanting by, to hide a past catastrophic event? Get, uh, an event which took our species back, back to the Stone sure. Age? Uh, As the trickle the of step. truth inevitably uh, turns however, into a river, uh, maybe one day Mars, we will finally I, uh, know I for sure. For, for one minute for, for this question, and that is, you have indicated that Mars had a, uh, was totally different thousands of years ago. 
Uh, is it possible that there was a civilization on Mars thousands of years ago? So the evidence is that um, Mars was different billions of years ago, not billions. thousands of years ago. Well, yes. That. And, and um, there would be, there is no evidence that uh, I'm aware of that. Would you, that rule, would you rule that out? That, see, there's some people, well, anyway. I would, uh, I would say that is extremely unlikely. Okay, well, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Brothers. Thanks for the good job you're doing. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Rohrbacher. Looking forward to finding out what's up there, that's for sure. Although through a process of Pavlovian conditioning, the harnessing of ferocious peer-pressured conformity as force for rejecting such claims that a past civilization once inhabited Mars, or indeed Mars as being the origins of life on Earth, it is a theory held in high regard by countless great-minded professionals within astrobiological fields. This strong scientific interest is often due to the planet's proximity and indeed its many similarities with Earth. However, to date, no proof has ever been publicly disclosed of past or present life on Mars. This, however, does not mean that they have not found it. We here at Mystery History have a far more accurate understanding of the processes of concealment and indeed the specific motivation behind such conspiracies than most. We often realize the thinking behind the concealment of certain past events, motives which far outweigh the financial gain one could expect from knowing that which others do not. Through our extensive research into artifacts which push our timeline here on Earth back several hundred million years, we have come to realize that the majority of people, unfortunately, are content with a lie, a lie in replacement of a terrifying truth. Numerous studies have revealed that human nature is, in part, formed by a supposedly unknown past trauma, or possibly several. It seems we have lived through an event which we could not comfortably deal with on a psychological level. The syndrome has become known as planet amnesia, and numerous highly compelling studies have demonstrated a strong argument for its existence. It seems we also have characteristics isolated by numerous talented individuals which demonstrate our anatomical structure was not built for Earth, suggesting we were built for an entirely different gravitational field, specifically a lower gravity, one like Mars has. Many other ailments we suffer, some believe, demonstrated that we were not originally native to Earth. Scientific searches for evidence of life began in the 19th century, and they continue to this day via telescopic investigations and land admissions. However, it is imperative, while searching for the truth, to be vigilant of concerted efforts to conceal it, or the creation of distractive conspiracy, funded hostilities, and attacks directed toward possible hypothesis. During the first days of serious exploration, Regarding the posit that civilization began on Mars, a lot of people were indeed searching for the ruins of such anomalies. Modern scientific inquiry, on the other hand, merely mocks such opinion, heavily emphasizing the search for water, chemical biosignatures in the soil and rocks at the planet's surface. Did the realization of intricacies surrounding such a theory being true stonewall further public study? It does appear to be the motive for concealment which we have experienced many times before. Have ruins been discovered and subsequently covered up due to a wanting to hide a past catastrophic event? An event which took our species back to the Stone Age? As the trickle of truth inevitably turns into a river, maybe one day we will finally know for sure. The Red Planet Although many people assume it to be the closest planet to our own, it is in fact Venus which comes closer to the Earth during its orbit around our star. Mercury is the closest planet not only to Earth, but to every other planet in the solar system at one time or another. Yet these giants barren landscapes incapable of supporting life. This reality is partly why Mars is so often the focus of man's attention in regard to our solar system's planetary bodies. With a partial atmosphere, and thanks to the Mars rovers, proven to possess water, 
it is a far less violent planet, not scorched like Mercury or filled with toxins like Venus. As such, for many years now, as the human population has exploded and modern technology has made self-sustaining, isolated life-supporting systems a reality, the search for suitable places for future colonization of the solar system has become a more and more popular subject of study. One of the most important additional factors for possible candidates for this exploration of space is the planet's distance from the Sun, nicknamed the Goldilocks Zone. Just like porridge being just right, Mars is located within a specific distance from the Sun capable of sustaining life. And although space agencies and other fields of funded institutions staunchly deny the possibility of it once having been inhabited, possibly even by man himself, dismissing such ideas as preposterous, Mars's desolate red oxide landscape is in fact uncannily similar to Earth's possible future appearance if humans were to continue unsustainable activities or a cataclysmic event were to occur. Thus, is it so preposterous to ponder the possibility that the planet we see before us today was in fact transformed into its lifeless form by an event or possibly past insatiable appetites for its resources by an ancient civilization which once called it home. Could the Cambrian explosion, the sudden appearance of advanced life on our planet, be evidence of terraforming? Could there have also been a similar, yet now hidden, mammalian explosion, indicating our own sudden arrival here on Earth after it artificially became capable of sustaining us? An orchestrated introduction of a complex food chain by ancient man who were in reality Martians. We have in the past covered some very strange occurrences on Mars, one in particular suggesting that possible black operations to colonize the Red Planet are already underway. The Mars rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days. This estimation was based upon the notorious dust storms which choke its surface. Yet spirit lasted an incredible seven years surviving until 2010, and Opportunity only recently ceased operation. This remarkable longevity, solely a result of what has become known as cleaning events, which for 14 years were repeatedly experienced and documented. Yet what is most curious regarding these events is that they always occurred while the rovers were offline. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, Severe Martian dust storms block sunlight to the rovers and threaten the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted and the rovers came back online, something had cleaned them of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events. Did our mysterious helper assume it had died? Join us in our next video, which will be an expose of artifacts, features, ancient testimonies and satellite anomalies, and many other factors which support the conspiracy of secret Martian inhabitation, supporting the hypothesis of an ancient Martian civilization that once called our red neighbor home. Evidential arguments we find highly compelling. In our last video, we discussed the possibility of there being a secret colony on Mars, a colony made possible by modern technologies, advances in sustainable agriculture and life-supporting artificial ecosystems, an apparent astronaut silhouette caught during one of the rover's unexplained cleaning events, and the resources such as water found upon the surface, making it an ideal candidate for such a mission. With running rivers, oceans, even possibly a thriving ecosystem, did we once call Mars home? If we did indeed once call Mars home, there would be undoubtedly ruins on its surface. Rare, surviving features that would still litter the landscape and over the years, countless possible examples of these have been spotted. And although many of these could be dismissed as mere cases of pareidolia, Others are just too perfect, too precise in their appearance to simply be dismissed. 
possible ancient relics of a lost Martian civilization. Ancient sarcophagi, heads of statues, pyramidal structures discovered to match star constellations in their layout, most notably that of a Pleiades constellation located near the famous face on Mars, an enormous face often argued as having been nothing more than a trickery of light, this regardless of ancient texts linking the face, the pyramids, and the constellational alignment to the burial requests of a supposed ancient Anunnaki king. Phobos is yet another curious anomaly of Mars, known to be in a continually decaying orbit. There are many features of this satellite which baffle astronomers and researchers alike. For example, when one calculates its orbit, they are shocked to find that this orbiting rock should have crashed into the Martian landscape many, many years ago. What's more, satellite imagery of its surface has captured images of a very mysterious anomaly on a number of occasions. A cuboid monolithic object with no impact crater resting upon its surface. Buzz Aldrin has even mentioned this anomaly, specifically calling it a monolith, also noting that he believed, quote, God put it there. Is Phobos's enigmatic orbit deliberate? A past attempt to draw our attention to it, subsequently discovering this monolith? Could it possibly hold undeniable proof of not only other life in the universe, but the past habitation of Mars itself? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Habitation on the moon. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, I'm not sure what it is right now. And I sure think we should identify what it is for America to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon. We can help. We can join with. Together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by the comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? The Mars exploration missions launched in 2003, successfully landing two rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, on the Red Planet. The mission's objective was to search for clues to pass water activity on Mars. The mission also included three previous landers, the two Viking program landers in 1976 and Mars Pathfinder probe in 1997. Both rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days due to the notorious dust storms present on the surface. Spirit lasted an incredible seven years, surviving until 2010, yet mysteriously, Opportunity is still functioning to this day. This is due to several events which have become known as cleaning events, which over that last 14 years have been mysteriously cleaning the rover's solar panels. Designed to go offline during the night to save energy, it is during these hours that something, or someone, has been helping to keep our rovers running. Opportunity has since been given five mission extensions, which it has successfully completed. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, severe Martian dust storms blocked sunlight to the rover and threatened the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted, they revealed that something had cleaned the rover of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. After nearly nine months of attempts to get the rover back on track, including test rovers on Earth, NASA announced on January 26, 2010 that Spirit was retasked as a stationary science platform. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events, leading NASA to lose contact shortly after. Most recently, Opportunity has seen a surge in energy after a cleaning event in March, the Martian month coincidentally resulting in a power boost of 70% when compared with power levels at the start of this year. And now mission scientists have released a self-portrait photo of the Mars rover. When compared with the dust coverage at its worst, the difference is nothing short of dramatic. Having just survived its sixth Mars winter, thanks to the most recent cleaning event, Opportunity now has solar panels that are as dust-free as they were when they entered the Martian atmosphere. 
Just what exactly has been cleaning the rovers on Mars? Covert astronauts? Or maybe it's aliens? Whatever it is, we may never know. Many different religions from around the Earth believe in the process of reincarnation. The Tibetan Book of the Dead being a notable example of this frequently reoccurring belief in an eternal reoccurring life force. Known as the Bardo Thadal, it is an ancient Tibetan text which stems from a larger corpus of teachings. It describes and is intended to guide the reader through the experiences that the consciousness encounters after death, a place known as the Bardo, the interval between death and the next rebirth. The text also includes chapters on the signs of death and rituals to undertake when death is closing in or is taking place. However, there not only exists literature based on these powerful and often ancient belief systems, but there also exists a smorgasbord of compelling cases, of people apparently able to recall these past lives, the processes for their rebirth, and indeed, all the previous knowledge acquired through their past life. In his book, Children Who Have Lived Before, Reincarnation Today, German therapist Trutz Hardo tells many stories of children who seem to remember their past lives with varied, verified accuracy. The focus of our video this evening is a boy named Boris Kiperjanovich, or Boriska, as he has become known. At the age of eight months, Boriska was speaking sentences. By the age of two, he was literate. He became a local celebrity for his astounding intelligence, being able to name all the planets in our solar system and much further afield sharing an impressive knowledge of many galaxies, and much more by only three years of age. In fact, his intelligence and knowledge of the universe around us would soon start to astound and attract some of the best minds in Russia. His mother, Nesezda, says she knew he was special the moment he came into this world. She claims to have felt no pain during labor, and that when she held Boris in her arms for the first time, he looked at her with a focused gaze of an adult. According to his mother, while in a trance around the age of three, Boriska created a double helix of DNA from colored blocks upon his bedroom floor. He began to mutter that he already remembered something from the Institute. He said, quote, I am a pilot of a research ship, a scientist. I will never cross the DNA of a man with reptiles. This contradicts the norms of species selection. End quote. Then he said several names in Latin, emerging from his trance, by simply saying, I'm playing. As time went on, he began to remember a supposed life upon Mars, claiming to be able to demonstrate that they had several other branches of DNA. According to Bariska, who would now be in his 20s, he was allegedly reborn onto planet Earth in 1996 along with many others of his kind, to help prevent a similar catastrophe from happening here. He refers to himself, and those like him, as indigo children. It seems that Bariska has vanished over the past few years, and very little, if anything, has been heard from him or his mother regarding his current whereabouts. The interviews he gave during his time in the public eye are undoubtedly fascinating, if nothing else. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there?